Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about luminosity masking. I did a video recently where I mentioned that and I had a number of people uh, mention that they would like some more tutorials around it. So that's what we're doing today. And we're doing it for a couple of reasons. Number one is that I think it gets confusing for people. And so this video will simplify what a luminosity mask is, how to use it. And number two, I just like to make videos about luminosity masks because they're awesome. They're my favorite mask. They may not be my most used mask, although I use them a lot, but they're incredibly powerful, incredibly useful. This video is gonna help you become a master of them. So let's get into it. I've got a photo here. I've already done a few things to it before and after. Obviously some <laughs> horrible optics that uh, got corrected uh, and a little bit brightening, right? So I use Develop Raw and I use Super Contrast. And what I wanna do is go and kinda of amp up this sunset. And the two things I'm generally doing when I'm amping up a sunset, and frankly, the two things I'm doing just, not just about, um, on every photo edit is light and color. And for me, luminosity masks are really good at helping me adjust light and color. Now, if you don't know what a luminosity mask is, it's a mask based on light values or tonal areas or tones, right? So it's just a, based, uh, a mask based on light. And it gives you the ability to really dial in very specifically where your mask is going to apply. And that's why I use it so much for light and color. The other thing that I edit in a photo is detail. Detail, I don't really need a luminosity mask for. Because I can just do that quickly with a brush or with an automatic selection or something like that. But for light and color, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how I edit in Luminar Neo, I've got a free ebook. 27 page guide PDF. You can get it for free down below at the link and uh, check that out if you'd like to learn more about Luminar. It includes a lot about masking. But here we go. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, the first thing I want to do here is apply a tool called Golden Hour. That's in the landscape category and it's right down here. And let's say I just go to 50 and that's a little bit much, right? But I, I want you to take note of how much it is. It's it's too much, and it's too much specific, uh, specifically in certain areas. Like over here, it looks kind of okay. It's getting a little bit much there. It looks a little too much there. And over here, it's just really not, uh, not working, right? It's just way too bright and over the top. And even these clouds are a little bit overly saturated. And this is where a luminosity mask comes in because it lets you pick certain tonal areas that uh, you can apply the mask to or uh, not apply the mask to, right? So I'm going to start by clicking on mask and luminosity, and that will go ahead, as it says here, analyze your photo. And it's going to come up with this bar. And this bar, which you can now see, represents the range of light in the image. Now, uh, as makes sense, right? Similar to a histogram, the left side is the dark stuff, shadows, and the right side is the bright stuff, like the highlights. The cool thing is, and you can't tell this yet, as the mask is currently applying to the entire photo. And the reason why is this bar stretches from both ends and it completely covers that spectrum of light. And so what you do is to start adjusting it. And as soon as you do, you'll see the red mask overlay come up. But as soon as I grab this and start moving this to get out of the shadows, you'll see that it uh, impacts the entire photo uh, when I'm like that. But as I start to drag it, you will see the shadow areas start to have the mask removed from it. And that's because I'm taking this bar and I'm dragging it away from the shadows toward the center, right? Which is, uh, you know, hopefully this is obvious, but shadows there, midtones, and then highlights on the other end. And of course, the entire spectrum of light in between. So as I drag this end of the bar, you can see it's getting away from the darker parts, the shadows, and therefore the mask is just applying in the lighter parts, which is like the currently the midtones because I'm in the middle of the photo, and of course the highlights, it's covering that entire spectrum. Now, the other thing you can do, let's say I go back this way and cover more of the shadows, I can also take the bar from this end and drag it away from the highlights. And this is something I want to do with this photo. So you can see what's happening here is that it's getting away from the highlights, the really bright parts. It's also getting away from the shadows, the really dark parts. And that's because I have moved this bar uh, from both ends to get away from the shadows and the highlights. Now, the interesting thing here is I can also grab this bar and start moving it around to see what it looks like in terms of what areas the mask is going to apply to. So as I drag this entire bar, now remember this bar has been compressed, as you can see here, it's not covering the full spectrum of light. 
but I can take this bar and I can move it around to see what makes most sense. Now, if you remember with golden hour, I adjusted it to about 50 and I felt like it was too much in the shadows and too much in the bright parts, but it looked pretty good in kind of the mid tones. So that's what we're going to do in this image is uh, move this around, decide where we think the mid tones uh, or really where this looks the best, which is kind of in the mid tones. However, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. And that is that number one, there's too much coverage here, so I can compress this further. So as long as you haven't left the masking menu, you can continue to adjust this and make it look kind of the way you want it to look in terms of further refinements. Now, speaking of refinements, the key and frankly most important aspect of luminosity masking, I think, is these two little triangles down here. What these triangles do is you can actually grab the triangles and you can separate them from that bar. Now, when you do that, what that's doing is feathering that side or that portion of the mask. Because I'm moving away from the left side and moving toward the shadows, what's happening is I'm feathering toward the shadows. So let me put it back. A great example is right over here in this dark cloud. You can see that line where it's coming along and the mask is applied where it's red and not applied where it's not red. Well, that line is fairly distinct or hard. It's a hard edge, no feathering, no transition zone, which means any adjustment I make in the mask to the tool that the mask applies to, uh, you'll see it very visibly there. And then right next to that, because the, it's kind of a light switch transition, a hard drop off, if you will, from the uh, masked area to the non-masked area. What, means, uh, what that means is you don't get any transition with the edit. It's gonna be very abrupt. What that means to your viewer of your photo is that uh, it's a very rough transition, very abrupt transition, so it's very noticeable. And the way to get a really classy, beautiful edit is to have a nice transition. This is essentially a gradient. And in all my masking videos, I talk about gradients. That's why this is so important. So you grab this triangle and you start dragging that and you see what's happening here is that that edge is now a gradient instead of here, hard, abrupt, very uh, distinct change. Now I start dragging that and it fades or transition. It makes it a very smooth transition. What that means is it will blend really nicely into the photo, meaning it's not noticeable to your viewer. So that's incredibly important. And you can do, of course, the same thing over here. So I can do, if you take a look up here in the sky, again, very abrupt change from where it's masked to where it's not. But if I start taking this triangle and dragging it, you can see I start getting that smoother transition, which means nicer blend, less noticeable impact of your edit, so your viewer has a better viewing experience. And that's really what this is all about. And again, I can still move this and kind of further refine or adjust uh, the entire area. I can still continue to collapse the uh, area that's covered by the mask, uh, as well as move this left or right to further accommodate that. The other thing to point out is this area here in between these two bars that I originally started with, that's where your mask is getting 100% applied. So it gets the full effect of the edit. This transitional zone is where it starts to fade, transition, blend, feather. I use all these words essentially interchangeably. But what that means is smooth transition, really pleasant viewing experience for your viewers. And so I did not want any of that stuff in that bright area. So I'm going to come back this way a little bit. And I'm going to go maybe like this uh, with a bigger, broader transition. Because the further I drag this triangle away, the broader the area or the greater the area that the, my, um, my transition happens over. So I'm going to do the same for the highlights. And then maybe come back this way a little bit. Maybe expand that range a little bit more into the, some of those highlights. And what I have now is a mask that applies really nicely over here, fades gently into the bright areas. It skips the really bright areas here. And I'm getting just a gentle touch along the top of the grass, kind of a kiss, a little bit of a nudge in that direction. And now if you look at my application of Golden Hour, much more subtle, even though I'm at 50, which is pretty high. And so if you look at the before and the after, Nice bit of warmth in these clouds. Nice bit of warmth over here. Just a touch of warmth along the top of the grass that was already kind of golden, as though that sunlight is kind of kissing it. 
but not impacting the light over here where it's you know arguably a little bit blown out so before and after and that's how and why i use luminosity mask for light and color because it's really powerful it gives you that ability to transition lets you target very specifically the different light values in a photo and if you think about it a photo is just a collection of light so it makes a lot of logical sense to me why luminosity masks are so useful now having done that the other thing i like to do with photos is use accent ai and maybe i'll go to 50 again and again 50 is too much for for most tools it makes a huge impact on the photo it looks kind of cool but it's overdone right so this is an ex example of where i'd use luminosity mask again and i generally use accent ai with luminosity mask or some kind of mask every time and i'll do something similar here i want to get it away from the uh, shadow areas it's mostly the foreground and the mountains and some of the clouds i want to get it away from the really bright spots in the sky and i'm going to just rebuild this mask it's going to be very similar to the last mask and if you weren't aware you can copy and paste masks so if you have one that you really like copy and paste it uh, but i'm rebuilding it just to show you uh, the example of how you build these and feather them and I'm going to make this one slightly different. Um, I liked what it did to some parts of the sky. It gives it a nice little bit of boost. I don't really need it in the foreground. So again, I think I'm going to do it where it's just kind of kissing, for lack of a better word, the tippy top of that grass. And I want a little bit of nice fade into the sky to give it a little bit of drama. Maybe pull slightly away from the shadows, compress that tonal area. Again, remember, 100% of your mask is applying in this area, and it fades into the highlights that direction and fades into the shadows in that direction and i think that's probably enough and now this 50 percent gives a nice little bump to the photo without going over the top because accent ai without a mask can get over the top pretty quick if you look at the before and the after right before and the after nice little pop nice little umph nudge in a dramatic direction without going over the top and that's where luminosity masks come in. Light and color, which is a whole lot of what Accent AI does. Very subtle implementation without going over the top. And you can smooth it nicely over a broad area for that gradient transition blend zone that I talk about by dragging those little triangles. So before and after gives me a nice little nudge towards drama without overdoing it. And that is why and how I use luminosity masks so much in my edit. They're absolutely the best, most powerful mask in Illuminar. I use them all the time. Hopefully this gives you some ideas about how to do that. Check out my ebook for more details as well. I'll be back soon, my friends. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I hope this has given you some nice insights into Luminosity Mask. I'll talk to you soon. You guys take care and until next time, adios.